Google I.O. 2019 kicked off as a massive event as per usual, and so if you're wondering how all of this applies to you, stay tuned. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. Let's get right into the details of what went down today. Let's start with some easy things. The Google Home Hub is not the Google Home Hub anymore. It is now the Nest Hub, and it is sold in 12 countries now, or 12 additional countries that you're seeing on screen now. It's also 129 US instead of the 149 US. We've been expecting the Nest Hub Max, and that was unveiled, but we were all expecting 300, 400, I, People were commenting $500 when they heard the capabilities. Well, 229 US, which even I was surprised at. I thought they could get down around 300, but that is very aggressive pricing for the specifications that we heard, which does include a 10 inch display, smart spe or stereo speaker pair, and I did hear a mention of a sub in the back as well. So I'm sure it's a very small sub given that the footprint looks almost exactly the same as this, just larger. There is the Nest camera on it, and with that Nest camera comes some additional functionality that nobody expected. So the camera number one, and we'll hear security and privacy as we go through these updates all throughout, but the little button on the back that's here on your Nest Hub, it now you just tap that and it electrically disconnects both the mic and the camera on that Nest camera. Now, that Nest camera totally can behave like any other Nest camera in your home, so you can view it uh, remotely and it acts as a Nest camera for two-way communication. It also allows Google Duo video calls, which is very important, but the biggest feature I thought I saw on the device here was face match. And so face match coupled with voice match or independent of each other would allow you to simply look at the device and when you're asking questions or when you've just looked at the device, it's going to bring up information that is tailored towards you. So I think this is very important in terms of automation and it's probably one of my favorite features that was rolled out today. One last thing I'll leave with you with in regards to the Google Home products and the Nest Hub products and all of those is your alarms now. You don't need to say the wake, world, wake word when you want them to stop. The Nest Hub Max is also a thread hub, so we expected that. I had half expected a Zigbee hub, but there was no mention of that, and it is not a wireless access point, and that actually makes sense now that I've kind of seen the FCC filing that was released or basically put up today in the morning before they started the IO keynote. We also saw the ability from kind of the digital photo frame to share directly with people and this relates to a couple of more personalized features made possible by voice match and face match. So what we're seeing is personal results essentially showing up when you ask for a a recipe and so they're calling it picks for you and when you ask for a recipe if you liked a certain type of food well it's going to show you that certain type of food more often than when someone else in your home actually goes and asks for a recipe for something so that will personalize a little more for you on top of that personal references is being expanded upon so and it's being coupled with improvements in the AI and I won't get into the details of the improvements on the AI front but what we saw from Google was basically their language learning capabilities or their language understanding capabilities has gotten to a point where if you ask for what the traffic is like on the way to your mom's house and this is a demo they showed then it it recognizes that you're not talking about a place called mom's house in the city you're in, it recognizes that you're talking about your mother who is a contact in your phone and in your Google Home application. And that's really where all of this started. We saw this show up where it was kind of these personal things about you where you could put in birthdays and little reminders for yourself 
but they're clearly trending in the direction of creating personalized results from you for you in a number of different ways. Before we get into all the software updates with Android and, and uh, the Pixel devices, we have to talk about that new Pixel device. Pixel 3a was put out. I didn't see anything about Pixel 3 XL. It is released in a number of countries, so I thought the 3a would just come out in basically one country here and that would be the US but it's out today you can go buy them aggressively priced at that 399 that we were expecting and three colors the black the white and what they're calling purple ish so you can go look on the store page actually at store.google.com if they're selling it in your country well then you can go and you can buy one as well and the tech specs are all there so I'm not going to roll through all of those. But one of the things that I saw there that will have to be very carefully implemented is actually what they called assistive edge. And so you can squeeze the phone to actually get the assistant to pop up. Now, of course, that assistant as of today and throughout this year, most things were promised within this year is going to be much more powerful. So let's get into that. And honestly, there's so much that I'm literally going to have to read off of my phone here. So the Google search was improved so dramatically. We saw full coverage, which you will see within kind of Google news search results. When you're searching for news, you get a kind of a full coverage type of uh, layout. And so that showed up in just standard Google search. And that means from any device and any search, any place you're searching. Uh, podcasts have come directly into search and we saw these 3D models that were dropped into uh, locations right there on the, on the stage as they went through this. I mean, they put a shark on stage with them and they wanted to walk right up to it. So it was very interesting, but was really, what was really powerful about it was actually the fact that you could drop a device like this into your home. So because it was AR based, you could actually just drop that in using your Pixel's phone or your Android's phone and it would show up how it would look in your home with this 3D model. So you can see how powerful that would be from a marketing perspective. That's all related to Google Lens as well. So you could search based on looking at a device with your camera and there was many more capabilities that you could see that this would extend into with that. Now, Google Lens isn't something new, but it's direct integration into search is obviously going to be very powerful. Duplex on the web is a new term that you're going to hear and I think this is going to be easier for Google to implement than really their AI that was making reservations for you and I think this solves a real world problem that a lot of companies are kind of putting band-aids over right now. We see autofill on lots of phones and that's great because you don't have to fill out these forms but Duplex was literally on screen filling out a car reservation based on an appointment somebody had in in their calendar and it was all tied together so they had to book a car for a reservation that they already had so the dates were pre-filled out where that was was already pre-filled out the assistant was knowing which kind of car the person liked in the past and filling out some of the details of all the different forms all for that person and and so what was really impressive about this too was this did not require any additional programming from the business side. So they used national car rental in this demo and national had to do nothing for that. The Google Assistant has a new driving mode it's called. And so with that interface, basically everything is a one tap away. You will see all the different results that you would normally want, where you're driving to and you can single tap to go to navigation. You have uh, podcasts or things that you've been playing in the past are sitting there available for you to continue. You can also get to your music, of course, and contacts to call 
on the fly. Now, as you went to navigation, because it was all tied with your system's Bluetooth, basically it would tell you that somebody's calling, ask you if you want to answer, and if you didn't, well, that's what the guy did on stage. He didn't want to answer his mom on stage, I guess. So on top of this, we saw Assistant go to Waze uh, as well this summer. The integration for that driving assistant will be there this summer as well. 30 plus different languages or dialects and 80 countries here with the Google Assistant on board. So that's a ton. Now, on the AI front, what, what kind of showed up here for me was not only was Google paying attention to the size of the devices and really trying to minimize costs, well, they were doing it in a very smart way a long time ago. So what they've been doing is they've been basically reversing how the computing power goes here. And this has a really important component for Google Home devices and, and the Pixel devices and really any Android device as well. So what they've basically been doing is turning AI on its head. And that means that all of the processing can go on locally and then it will just feed back a little bit of information and again they were very heavy on the privacy and security concerns number one you can control it with some new tools in your account settings which we'll talk about in the ch on the channel here but also it wasn't sending a bunch of personalized data it was sending the data of what it had learned essentially back so that every other device could be updated with this. So you could see how this model would be very strong in terms of bringing new information and disseminating it out, which they showed with something like Gboard where uh, a new lexicon or colloquial, colloquialism, I can't say that word, um, you know, a new saying comes out. That's the best way of putting it and it, it Basically, people start typing it, and now it starts to show up as an autofill on Gboard. So Gboard's already using this new method, and uh, they call it federated learning. But, you know, I'm kind of mixing the AI topics here a little bit, but ultimately for you as a user, what it means is not really any device updates. The device updates that you get will be seamless over the air and you, you really won't know they're going on. And then on top of that, most of the processing is done locally. And what that turned into in terms of a demo here was probably the best demo I thought and showed us the real power on these Pixel devices going forward. So they basically combined that local processing power with continued conversation on a Google Assistant, on an Android, on a Pixel device. And this person rattled off 30 commands and I would say in the time it takes you right now sometimes to get one or two commands out of a Google Home product. So that's ultimately what all of this work Ha that they've been doing turns into, but it does, it, it turns the whole industry on its head because nobody else can keep up with that pace and therefore they can't automate their life at that pace. So all that to say, it was an incredible learning about AI there that, that you could have today, just listening to the keynote and they aren't going into the details where all the sessions will go into throughout the, the couple of days here. Now, on top of this, the accessibility discussion, we talked about that a little bit. They said 15% of the population uh, in general in the world has some kind of disabilities. And so they've been working with AI to live transcribe and you're going to find this on all the Pixel and Android devices, the ability to live transcribe any video. That includes your own videos, that includes YouTube, that includes any video source that you can. It will live transcribe it and it's being done locally and not being transmitted back. So security, privacy, local processing power. The other demo that we saw was a live call with the assistant basically assisting the full phone call. So one person on one side of the conversation could speak entirely normally and the other person had a phone had a Pixel phone and was able to respond using the keyboard and or using some of the smart replies that would show up. And they had an entire conversation with 
without that person ever speaking on the other side of the phone. And it was a phone conversation because we could hear the first person. It was also transcribed on the screen so that if somebody can't hear, if they're deaf, well, they could see the write out and then they could utilize whatever interface they wanted to give the response back. Now with all that said, you can go and watch our very popular Google Home Updates video that talks about all the news that was earlier this week. So go ahead, watch that guys, and otherwise, we'll see you next time.